So, you know, a lot of people ask me, should I go ahead and just buy a business when I get started? That way I could sort of I buy the business, you know, I've got the clients, and then I can sort of go on and add on top of that. I think that's typically a terrible idea, especially if you're doing any type of service business or some like accounting. I talked to somebody today who was trying to buy an accounting firm. And because you just literally have no idea what you're buying. I mean, if you've never bought an accounting firm, for example, I asked him, I said, well, how much should the clients pay? He said, oh, they pay about 100 to $200 a month. I was like, dude, you wouldn't want to buy that. The minute you buy it, you're going to be pissed you bought it. And, I, and he, he said it was going to be about $300,000 and, you know, he'd have to put some of his money down and then he'd have to borrow some of the money. And, um, you know, what it really comes down to for most people whenever they first get started and they're thinking about buying a firm or buying a business is they're just sort of avoiding the main things you need to do, right? So like I asked him, I said, how many people do you know that could be potential clients? Like, how many do you know? And he's like, oh, probably 10 to 15. I said, have you reached out to them? Have you sat down with them to see if they'd be interested in working with you? No. I said, okay, what you should do right now is you should go over to your computer. You should sit in front of your computer. You should put each of their names down. You should draft an individual email, put in the subject line, catching up. Hey, you know, Uncle Jim or you know, whoever it is, would love to catch up uh, for coffee or lunch. Are you available later on this week? Send, 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 all the way to 15. And I told him, you know, that's what he should do. And I said, well, what's the likelihood that you're going to do that today? Like right after we get off the phone, he said 10%. I said, ooh, doggy, there, there it is, there it is. You feel more comfortable buying a $300,000 business and draining all your savings, but you're so scared. Oh, I'm so scared to just go and just go. And, oh my gosh, I'm so scared to send Uncle Jim an email to have a lunch. Oh, give me a break. I mean, you got to grow up a little bit. And look, I get it, because I used to be scared like that. I used to be scared like that, too. I mean, I, I avoided it, too. I mean, it's avoidance of what you know you need to do. You feel more comfortable, oh, if I can just search up a $300,000 business and purchase it, and then I'll just make money and work for myself. To be honest, if you get that business and you don't learn how to grow it, you don't learn how to be uncomfortable and go out there and talk to clients and sit down with Uncle Jim and take a Visa card off of him because he's going to sign up for you for twelve fifty a month and start charging him. If you don't learn how to do that, then you're not gonna be able to do that for the $300,000 business. That business is either not gonna grow or it's gonna go in the opposite direction. You're never gonna be able to restructure it, sell good deals. And so, you know, people, whenever they come and they say, oh, I wanna buy a business and that's the way I'm gonna get started, terrible idea, terrible idea. You know, he has to drain all of his savings, which he had quite a bit of savings, and he would have to borrow a bunch of debt, right, against this business. But I kind of went through the math with him. I was like, dude, if you got, I think it was five clients at 1,000 a month, five clients at 2,000 a month, five clients at 3,000 a month, that's 15 human beings, right? 15 human beings, that's 360,000 in sales. And he's looking at buying a $300,000 business. So literally, he can get a business that's bigger than what he wants if he just gets 15 human beings to decide to work with him. 15 human beings, 15 human beings. And by the way, if he learns how to get 15 human beings as clients, he'll be able to get 100. Right, but if he just buys a bunch of crummy ones and he doesn't know if they're crummy or not because he's never really worked in this type of business, he doesn't know what he's doing. The problem is the reason, the, the way that he's making decisions is he wants to be comfortable. He even said it, he's like, oh, I feel a lot more comfortable. He even wanted to partner with somebody, right? Typically it's not the best idea to partner with somebody right in the beginning. It's better to sort of get out there on your own and then find, if you want to partner with somebody, you can if it makes sense. But a lot of times people partner with other people out of fear and they, they buy a business out of fear because they can't, they can't just do what's uncomfortable. And that's literally the exact words that came of his, out of his mouth. You know, I feel more comfortable buying a business. I feel more comfortable working with somebody else. Dude, it's not about comfort. It's, it's not about comfort. The more uncomfortable you are, the more you're gonna be successful. Comfort and success have an inverse relationship, completely inverse relationship. And that makes sense, right? I mean, think about it like a bodybuilder or like somebody who's in the UFC, right? Or a professional athlete. I mean, the amount of time they spend in the gym just shredding up those muscles, working on resistance training and all that, that pain that they go through is going to give them a better chance of succeeding when they get in the game when it matters. It's no different in business. I mean, the things that you go through, that you put yourself through, your pain tolerance, the higher your pain tolerance, the more successful that you're going to be. And at every level, it gets hard. It's hard to quit your job. It's hard to get to 100,000 a year. It's hard to get to 500,000 a year. It's hard to get to a million. It's hard to get to 10 million. It's hard to get to all these levels. And people just sort of quit mentally all along the way at these various different points. But you, you got to sort of rewire your thinking. And I was telling this guy, this look, you got to rewire your thinking to don't make a decision about something being comfortable. In fact, if you see something that's comfortable, you probably just shouldn't even do it. It's probably gonna be a red flag. So if you feel like you should buy a business, 
probably not a good idea because you feel comfortable doing that. You don't think you should email those 10 people and the idea of doing it, oh, I'm so scared and I'm only 10% of you gonna do it. I mean, you know, dude, you, you gotta get over it. Like, and he gave me all these reasons. Oh, well, this guy doesn't have a business of the right size and this guy already has accounts. I said, dude, you're just thinking about it too much. Thinking is a bad habit. When you're, it's, when you're just getting started, thinking is a bad habit. Just do it. Just get out there and crush it. Too many people thinking too damn much, especially people that are like a little bit smart. You know, they just think too much. You'd be better off if you were a little dumber and you should act a little dumber and just do it. You know, quit thinking about the damn thing.